Well, it's just about uh, 6.30 in the morning on Monday, August 10th. Let me just check and make sure we've got the right day. I've been having a hard time. Yeah, it's August 10th. I've been having a hard time remembering what day it is. Uh, the more I get involved with a particular project, the uh, more I lose focus. The focus for the project causes me to sort of forget the things that are around me. And I forget days and... I actually forget. Whole weeks go by without necessarily realizing the time has gone by. But the thing is, I do survive it. I do move on. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just what happens. The focus on a particular project uh, becomes so intense that 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 uh, this is the end result. I mean, so far I've had a very very good ride in terms of what I've seen, what I've experienced, uh, the observations I've been able to make as as compared to sort of you know doing these massive discoveries. Is that they're good. But they, they occur over a long period of time. So it's hard to sort of say that that every day is an amazing, you know, exciting day. The only thing I can say in terms of of how things... Sort of, sort of about my eyes. On about how things go. And that's what happens is my mind loses its focus on how things go. Is that, well, I can't predict what's going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. There is no sort of set routine for that. There is a routine, you know, like the uh, YouTube scroll, uh, that sort of keeps a, I don't know, it's a bizarre feeling that even if the routine is minor, not of any significant, not of any significance or importance, even the minor routine is comforting when you have no other routine. When everything else is sort of uh, unknown or infinite or 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 what have you, it, it just this becomes your sense of reality. So I'll, even though it's like oh well, six thirty and six thirty in the morning, I'm just now starting my YouTube stroll, and I just finished up the Yowie vlogs. Uh, they were talking about talking about victimhood. They were talking about the one of the uh, the brother-in-law is a chef, so they're, sh they're showing them how to cook and the different things you can make. And that's what I do. I I, I have a chef background. I, I've I do a lot of cooking. It's not that I've done it professionally, but I could if I wanted to. I'm the type of person that, even though I don't, I don't know something, I'm willing to give it a shot and learn as I go. Where other people, and then this is talk about being the victimhood, playing the victimhood, and say, "Oh, I can't do that. That's not for me. That's I don't, I don't know how to do that." And just sort of backing off and said, you know, not get willing even to give it a try. I'm willing to try things. Other people aren't, and the thing is, they, they, they. I mean, the, the fear of, of. Of, of failure is what prevents a lot of people from really moving forward in terms of what they want to do and then they sit back and say well why don't I have this and why don't I have that and a lot of times it's because again it's your expectations if you expect to always be great and always be wonderful and when you're doing something for the first time you're not going to be wonderful you're not going to be great you're gonna suck <laughs> But if you and if you're not willing to go through that that bad period of, of sucking because you're just learning, then you're never gonna get to the good stuff. And so this is you know they they talk about this, but now it, 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 what happens is that the discussion of not playing the victim, of being you know sort of even if think things even if you do make mistakes, that it's okay and you can move forward from there. That's not the so-called positive affirmation of you are worth it. That is, as I say, no refunds. It doesn't matter what happens. Whether you're worth it or not, no refunds. You move forward. You continue on regardless. 
So the experience becomes the positive thing, even though there may have been negative consequences. Because it doesn't necessarily mean you made bad choices. It's that sometimes even when you make the good choices, there are negative consequences. So what happens is, is that it, 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 it is how you how you work through an experience determines its overall positive perspective or negative perspective. So a negative effect does not mean does not mean negative perception. You can have a negative effect or a negative consequence, but still have a positive perspective. So this is these are things to sort of to think about, and I think a lot of people are are thinking about. It, but there are also a lot of different views and how you approach it. And not everyone. I want to say, nobody is perfect. We all have our own mistakes. So, anyways, this is the beginning and onward and upward. It takes about 10 seconds for the oscillations to stop uh, once uh, I hit the uh, play button, the, the record button for the video. Anyway, it's 11.27 uh, uh, on August 10th, uh, Monday, August 10th. Even though I just went to bed oh, a couple, just not 8 o'clock in the morning, I ended, I ended up uh, getting some sleep. And it's more like a sleep break because I don't sleep straight through. Two hours later, two and a half hours later, at uh, 10.30 I was up and decided to do some gaming, shift my gaming schedule around, uh, watch some cartoons, made myself uh, a nice ham sandwich. And yesterday's uh, delivery, I got a delivery yesterday, uh, um, it was late in the evening that didn't, didn't vlog. Uh, and here it is here. This is, this is the delivery sheet. And it came from uh, my new grocery store. I still have the old one, TNT, but this is the new one I'm using. Also Asian. It's called Fusion. And they, they gave me this gift bag for free. This is uh, one of the courtesy gifts they gave me. I got that yesterday. They deliver, deliver in a box. I got my milk from there. Um, I'm making a, uh, a uh, pork tenderloin uh, sausage that I'll use to slice for, for cold cuts. I'm getting everything prepared. Uh, tonight is too hot to, it's too hot to do anything during the day so typically I, I I'm sleeping the, like the humidity is even though it's only let's see here it's only it's only about 82 degrees in here but the humidity humidity is up up on the higher end so it doesn't allow the body to breathe. It, it, it feels like the body, the heat is trapped inside the body. And so instead of having hot food, you have cold food. And I had my uh, my uh, milk tea. I got to show you that bottle in terms of how big it is and, and how to produce uh, the tea. I get my teas from this place. I get the teas from the, uh, the, the two other two places, from TNT and this place. I can get my good my um, the, basically it's a loose leaf tea. I can get it from both uh, suppliers, so I'm happy with that. I'm happy with uh, that. Uh, and the thing is, this supplier, the Fusion, actually has a uh, a wholesale section where I get my sugar and my um, vegetable oil from. And as much the wholesale is much cheaper than uh, if you actually went and buy, buy retail. So that's typically what I do. I buy wholesale. I buy in bulk, and it cuts my cost down. So I'm spending about, um, on average, I'm spending about uh, between thirty and forty dollars a week on food, and I eat very, very well. Once, once you learn how to cook, and you know how to do things for yourself, uh, then the food costs go down, while the quality goes way, way up. And that's kind of what, uh, what the uh, uh, Yowie vlogs, um, with the dad, I can't know what his name is, is actually learning. Uh, oh, his name is John. What he's learning is that if you cook, because he's got a brother-in-law who's a chef, if you learn to cook, your your 
costs go down and, and, the, and the quality of food goes up. And so he is learning these different things. He's learning that you can do more without having to go out to all these different restaurants and, you know, and, and pay a, a lot of money for going out to eat. Uh, Chick-fil-A and all these places, they're not, they're not inexpensive. And if you're living on a budget, more often than not, uh, Chick-fil-A breaks your budget. But the thing is, there are people out there, I know there are people out there, uh, who don't know how to cook. In our situations where they have Chick-fil-A and McDonald's or whatever uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's, that's, their, uh, well, that's their food. And so as prices go up, the amount of money they have to spend on food goes up as well. Well, it's just about quarter of five in the morning for, it has to be August 11th for Tuesday. Uh, we're ending Monday's vlog. I gotta remember to put these date, time and date stamps in there because I do have a bit of a date confusion. If, and if it's not in here now, uh, I don't know when I did this. Uh, that was my latest video that I did put up the, the, uh, just a few, uh, a couple hours ago. I had a title of date confusion because I had no idea what date it was. <laughs> so that's kind of how things go. How things go. Um, anyways, I'm at the uh, Yaoi Vlogs. And the Yaoi Vlogs, uh, Yaoi Vlogs, uh, it's our life. Even um, the Leroy's have enough side channels. The kids now all have channels that I could sort of stay here and do... Uh, a, a brief tour, you know, stay longer at the Yaoi Vlogs and look at Branson's video, look at uh, 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 Danielle's vi uh, video, uh, Savannah, all these, th all, they all have these different, uh, their own channels, so they're all producing their own content. Same thing with uh, It's Our Life, uh, both uh, Brindley and, and uh, Capri have their own channel, so you go by and check that out as well, and is now part of the YouTube stroll. But the thing is, is that watching this last one, uh, the, I was at uh, the Branson Tannerice, uh, uh, Branson's uh, 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 channel, and he's got his uh, he's got his wife. Uh, he's with his wife Mora, and I think it's Mora's brother comes down, and it gets to the the comes to the question. When you're buying clothes, and you got to the point where you're buying clothes, how much do you pay for nothing? Now we've all heard of, we've seen the ripped jeans, and maybe there's a there's a tear at the knee, so on and so forth. But the thing is, once you start tearing something like that, you know, the knee or this or that, it starts to grow. It's a tendency for, 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 for the thing to grow. So, okay, it's, it's ripped at the knee. Then it's ripped at the thigh. Or, or, or a little bit at the, at, at, at the, at, on, on the knee. These pair of jeans were ripped all the way, almost from the crotch, to where the pockets are, all the way down the front. Expo you know, so... The upper thigh was exposed, the knee cap was exposed, and the knees were exposed uh, down to the point where you have the hemline around the ankles of the, of the pants. How much did you pay for these? How much did you pay for, for, for jeans that had no front? It was basically the sides and the back, but everything else was ripped. Are we going to get to a point where, where, you know, this is for those of you who remember this or can go look this up. It's called The Emperor's New Clothes. And it's about uh, these tailors who come in and convince the emperor and the people of the kingdom that they've created a new thread that's invisible. So fine it's invisible. And so they spent thousands of dollars, the king's money gave them thousands of dollars to create 
in an elaborate suit for the king made of invisible thread. And of course, he once he, the suit was finished and the, the the tailors got their money, the tailors got out of there before the king decided to have a, have a, have a parade. <laughs> so the king decided to have the parade. And everybody clapped and applauded. The only one who didn't clap and applaud was this little kid, you know, and kids are the way they are. They'll, they're simply just no censor. It's just, it's just, and as the kid king was walking down, the kids are all in front. Looking at around, why is the king naked? <laughs> He's got no clothes on. And, oh no, no, it's an invisible thread. <laughs> and so, what, what point in time are we going to go into the Gap or any of these stores like Justice or Forever Twenty One? And you see a, a clothes hanger out there, and on the clothes hanger they'll have a price there of two hundred dollars, something that's very expensive, of ultra fine thread, invisible thread, invisible clothing. How much do you bet that people, if they had invisible clothing, clothing for Justice Forever Twenty One, that it would catch on, it would become a fad, a thing, and people would be dropping thousands of dollars to get these invisible clothes and walking around the town with their new invisible clothing on. And this comes to a question, because I'm old enough to remember the 70s, which was, hev and even the 80s with rock and roll, was heavily drug, drug influenced. There was a lot of drugs back then. This was, this was during the psychedelic era. And of course, after that, you had, you, the psychedelic era lasted well into the 80s. And yet, on a conservative paper t today, just actually yesterday, or earlier today, I picked up a, conser a conservative paper, a newspaper. It was at my parents' house. And what did you see on the front page? The uses, the good uses of psilocybin. What's psilocybin? Magic mushrooms. These are hallucinog hallucinogenics. And I've been reading articles in serious medical journals about the uses of LSD. That's it. What people know as acid. Again, a very, a very powerful hallucinogen. And there's the articles are serious. They're not. They're not joking around. They're very, very serious. We've come to a point now where insanity is normal. The new normal now is insanity. It, it, it's. It doesn't matter if something is real or not. I mean, look at the Great Fart Panic. I mean, you can't say the name anymore because, uh, you know, you might freak people out. People are freaked out anyways. So let's not say the name. Let's give the name Great Fart Panic. <laughs> give one to the comedians. It's not necessarily real. A large chunk of, of what people are feeling is all a created narrative and is well documented this stuff is well documented as such uh, by people like Edward Bernays who was who was uh, Sigmund Freud's nephew this is the creating of the narrative but you'll see people falling a line for it fawning over it creating fear over it and just generally freaking out but the thing is the Great Fart Panic isn't any, isn't isn't the only thing. The number of things that people come out with to frighten people, to scare people, it's enormous. So in many cases, you don't always feel like you're worth it. And this is the whole there's a whole discussion, you know, particularly uh, with the Yahweh vlog. It's all about are you worth it? But a lot of times you don't feel like you're worth it. But the thing is, from my perspective, there's no refunds. Doesn't matter whether I'm worth it or not, you know. <laughs> I'm not giving. I'm not giving. I'm not giving your money back. I'm going forward with the way I want to do things. <laughs>